What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 7, which is going to more or less be a theory this time around. We'll be talking about Chucky Season 3. We'll be talking about Saw X. We'll be talking about The Exorcist Believer. And we'll be talking about this lawsuit that is going on between Warner Brothers and Bonnie Aarons, who plays Valak from the Conjuring Universe. Now, just to start it off with Scream 7, Scream 7 could implement a variety of different things. One thing that's still on the table is this cult cult narrative possibility of course that's been around since the talks of scream 3 and what was canned and scrapped and what or what originally was and what didn't make it into the final cut etc and now of course we have cult like things being teased in scream 6 more more than scream 5 definitely in scream 6 where you have these two people at the start of the movie who were taken out by the baileys greg and jason i'm starting to wonder what if Scream 7 kind of loops in a connection between those two, Greg and Jason, and Amber and Richie from Scream 5? What if Amber and Richie from Scream 5 actually interacted with Greg and Jason online and unintentionally, not knowing knowingly to them, they inspired a subsection of Stab fans to have like their online little cult, if you will, who have a desire to finish Richie and Amber's story. The reason I'm thinking of that is because of the fact that that Woodsboro Truther group that makes a brief appearance in the opening of Scream 6, well, after the opening, when Sam is at her therapist's office, at Dr. Stone's office, we see these images come across her phone of Richie was framed, and it's on the Woodsboro Truther. That's the name of the Reddit page on her phone. That Reddit page and that group is still up. It's still active. Not a very popular group, but it just got me thinking, how much of these posts that I'm coming across will actually make their way into Scream 7? One post in particular is I've heard that those dumbass producers are making Richie and Amber the killers in Stab 9. So in Scream 7, are we going to see a Stab 9 in, in development, perhaps? And then another post on here says, Since Stab 8 was shit, who wants to be my accomplice to fix the franchise and finish Richie and Amber's film? And then down in the comment section, I'm seeing people saying they should go after these producers and make them pay. You know, they don't take the fans seriously. Obviously, a nod to their leader, Richie. So what I'm getting at is in Scream 7, what if somebody who does not have a passion for Stab, who does not have a passion for the constant exploitation, again, I've said that my idea for Scream 7 involves somebody who just simply wants all of this to end. What if somebody infiltrates these groups, of course, enlists some accomplices, deludes them into thinking they're on their side in terms of what they want they think they all want the same goal now they all want these survivors dead but they don't all have the same goal this person who is manipulating these stab fans this cult of stab fans thinking that they're going to send a message and finish richie and amber's film they think that they're that they're I'll say supposed leader, if you will, because this person I'm thinking of who's infiltrating the group has become their leader of sorts. They think that this person is on their side and has the same goal. This person's actual goal is sending a message to Hollywood that they need to stop the exploitation, that Stab 9 doesn't need to happen. In fact, no other Stab movies at all need to happen. And they want all of the survivors dead because they think that as long as these survivors are alive, the chances of a new Stab movie or the chances of more exploitation will constantly just continue to exist because somebody seems to always find a reason to to come after you guys and be upset with you they view themselves as someone doing the world a favor a vigilante of sorts like we kind of had teased in scream six but have that come to full fruition in scream seven also this person can be someone who knows that christina carpenter had something to do with the initial woodsboro incidents involving the death of marine prescott and she knew what billy and Stu were doing in 96 and yet she did nothing so they could actually want to get back at her and blame christina and her silence for as to why this exploitation has been going on for so many years and why the staff franchise exists beyond just the producers and the filmmakers because christina's silence was aiding in the source material being provided to these greedy individuals that this main villain main ghost face of mine can't can't stand so they're manipulating these stab fans they help them track down the survivors they basically let them do all of the dirty work for the most part not that this person wouldn't kill anyone but they're letting all the stab fans do all of the dirty work and then by the very tail end of the movie when there's maybe two fans of this cult left because i'm thinking of maybe six max with a seventh person being the main person i'm thinking of is who is not actually having the original goal as them this person takes out their remaining members takes out their 
partners, double cross them and gives their whole spiel to our remaining survivors. And then that could be Scream 7. That could, I could see some of these posts in the Woodsboro Truth are just coming into Scream 7. I just wanted to share my thoughts on that with you guys as a brief theory. I know that was a little long for an intro to the video, but now we're going to dive into the rest of these topics here. So I've seen you guys go on about when will Chucky season two be available on Peacock. Uh, apparently, according to Peacock, as they put out this tweet, they put out a tweet saying that season two comes to Peacock on September 4th. Season three, again, confirming is going to be available next day on Peacock starting October 5th. So we know season three again debuts October 4th and is going to be available next day on Peacock. And season two now we know will be available soon for everyone to catch up before season three airs. It'll be set in D.C. An episode is expected to be in jail. Nika is hunting Tiffany. We know is going to be probably a factor of the story based on the conclusion of season two. Mrs. Fairchild seems to be someone to expect back as well based on the ending of season two. Uh, four episodes are likely to be airing, but if I hear anything different, I will let you guys know. Also, we got this cool poster of Chucky Season 3 with the with the taglines, This fall, he's running for your lives. And it's a pretty cool poster. You know, it's Chucky up, up on the podium like he was in the announcement video. So we'll just have to see what Chucky Season 3 offers us later this fall. Diving into this scenario with the nun now apparently warner brothers discovery has been accused of short shorting bonnie aaron's her share of merchandising revenue for playing the demon nun in the conjuring universe this is coming from the hollywood reporter the complaint names warner's new line cinemas and scope productions which allegedly entered into an agreement with aaron's to play the nun in the franchise she was paid seventy one thousand for her role in the nun which grossed over 365 million against a budget of 22 million according to the complaint her contract included a 175 dollar bonus tied to box office performance on top of a share of profits from merchandise exploiting her character instead of accounting and paying in a tr transparent fashion warner brothers obscures and hides the true amount of mrs aaron's rightful share of merchandising revenues all while continuing continuing to exploit her states the suit filed tuesday in los angeles superior court now Here's my my comments. Bonnie might be the best thing about these solo nun projects. So screwing her over is simply unacceptable. And of course, this coming out on the verge of the release of the nun too, while I don't expect it to harm the box office in any way, it's just very peculiar that this is coming out right before something that again, based off what I know, I expect to fully be a completely shit movie narratively, but it will probably save itself based on its own visual aesthetics and the performances that are helping keep the shit shit sandwich of flow i'll say but that was an interesting bit of news to come across this week hopefully bonnie gets everything that she's owed if all of this is indeed true so diving into saw x the saw x trailer seems to confirm a death already if you dissect it close enough and shout out to you patrick burrow if you're listening to this for this amazing find if you don't want spoilers then shove off for a minute or so and hop back in to get the other update paulette hernandez's death by decapitation is teased in the newly released TV spots, but it doesn't look like she makes it out alive because in the trailer, there's actually a shot of, there's a shot of a uh, surveillance footage camera where John is using and it would appear Paulette is on the ground without a head because the clothes on the individual in the surveillance do appear to match up with Paulette. Now, of course I could be wrong, but I thought it was an interesting find. Now, another could, Another cool thing Patrick highlights in the TV spot is that Amanda's role may be her getting her feet wet with her first game before the events of Saw 2. Because I just re remembered this is taking place after Saw 1. So we could be seeing her getting more involved as opposed to how involved she was with the first events we saw in the original Saw. We could be seeing her kind of guiding these new victims and helping them in a way because you can hear her say she'll be okay as long as she keeps her head straight or something like that so witnessing amanda's first game post her own survival in the bear trap should allow us to see a fun dynamic between her and john also saw space is still reiterating that a scene in saw six is probably worth checking out once more when it's a scene that I've talked about where John is having a conversation with one of the folks involved with his insurance and they're talking about something in Norway, which seems to, again, be what inspired the events of what we're going to see in Saw X. So diving into this last thing here, it's a brief topic. The Exorcist Believer. Once again, the Exorcist Believer. 
The movie that I, again, am also expecting to be quite terrible narratively, but it might save itself thanks to some of its visual aesthetics, some of the performances, and some other components that I will probably get a credit, credit for, like its score, if it's able to be bone-chilling in a way. This movie is having yet another test screening on Tuesday in Las Vegas. Now, one of the people who actually watch my channel, they will be in attendance for this test screening, so they will be chiming back to me to let me know if there's been any reshoots or anything. Uh, so I look forward to hearing if there's been anything changed from the movie since it's last screened. If there are changes, I will let you guys know if there have been changes and kind of tease what they may have been because I know there actually was a post that came out that I did link in the description of one of my other videos highlighting some key differences that I know wasn't what I was initially told plays out in the film. So I'm curious if this was really a recent cut or if it might have been a previously earlier cut that this person saw that got completely altered because there then was someone on Twitter who chimed in saying that they had seen the movie but this person has been outed or referred to as an online troll and a lot of people don't really trust them so time will tell what I hear on Tuesday when the Exodus Believer has what I can only assume hopefully is this last test screening before it comes out in October let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification at numbers video in the description I'll have links to all my social media accounts I am on Facebook Twitter and Instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews I'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys I will see you in the next video